Yo, this video is for all my party people out there. The spirit of YouTube is alive and well here and it's only 119 days till Christmas. I'm just kidding. This episode is actually pretty low stakes. Sorry. I think by now you'd be braced for the misdirection of these intros. It's not that I'm not happy that you're here. I just think you deserve better. Anyway, today we're gonna take a look at my YouTube video setup. This is all the camera gear I use to make these YouTube videos for all you beautiful people. A little disclaimer. It actually took me a very long time to accumulate all this camera gear. Probably around four to five years, like a college degree, but useful. And actually most of this gear comes from the commercial video and photo production side of my business, which is not related to YouTube at all. I use all this stuff for my YouTube videos because, well, I have it already, but that's not what it was purchased for. I am not having it. Wouldn't stop me from making these YouTube videos. This is just my current YouTube video setup, but this is also a good YouTube video setup. This is a good YouTube setup too. This is a good YouTube video setup. Um, this is technically a good YouTube video setup. So this is not meant to be a flex because well, that comes later. Usually people do start their YouTube channels with the more primitive setup, and then as their channel grows, they expand that. But that's not what's going on here. I already had all this gear on my shelf before I had any YouTube subscribers, so I, I guess we're doing everything here in reverse, like the cha-cha slide. I'll put non-affiliate links to all the gear that I talk about in the description below. Leave a comment if you have any questions. This is gonna be a lot, so I'm sure I'll forget to mention things. Chapter one, lights. For my videos, I really only use two lights. I use the Aperture 120D and 300D, which is probably a surprise to no one. My main light here is the Aperture 300D with a mini light dome too. I have the regular light dome also, but it's too big to fit anywhere with regular height ceilings like I have. It doesn't get a lot better than this light though. It's just a big, beautiful light source with a million different Bowens mount options. It has some special effects options for narrative work like lightning, flickering lights, TV glow, etc. It's one of the few pieces of gear you can buy that is great for YouTube, and it's also great for the like commercial production world too. It's very cash money, and I'll probably buy another one at some point. My secret sauce back here is my Aperture 120D with the Aperture Fresnel two times lens mount with barn doors and a metal honeycomb grid. It came with these four plastic color filters, most of which are starting to break on me, but it's still a more affordable RGB option for me as I rarely use color on my commercial work. I use this color light setup for two reasons, I guess. I think YouTubers who use solid color backdrops in their videos looks fine. And I think YouTubers who use like a shelving system with knickknacks in their background also looks fine. So I decided to combine these two things for my YouTube videos for something that can also hopefully look fine. Side note, I don't think the Aperture 120D is in production anymore. Sorry, no time for closure on that. Chapter two, cameras. Right now we're shooting on my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K in Ultra HD ProRes at 30 frames per second with the LUT on it. We have a Sigma 24-70 to 2.8 on today and we're recording to a Samsung 1TB drive. The whole thing is powered by a V-mount battery that lasts forever. For YouTube, I don't know if it's the perfect camera, but for me, and especially for these talking head portions, the fact that it doesn't have a record limit does make it almost perfect. Stylistically, this form that you see helps drive my video ideas forward and it helps me do the only thing that's actually important <laughs> with a YouTube video and that's getting it done. This camera does have autofocus, but it's not reliable, which is fine. Hot take here, but autofocus is a really overrated camera feature for video. Not nah, really for photo, it's kind of great for photo. <laughs> but for video, you can live without autofocus and be fine. You can be free. I use my Blackmagic Video Assist five inch monitor to help me monitor my framing and check my focus peaking. It's actually been a really good camera setup for my YouTube style so far. I need continuous power and I need a lot of storage. That way 
I can just kind of keep pushing through this material without having to break rhythm. I use my Canon EOS R6 for more run and gun pickup shots. And for POV angles, I use my GoPro Hero 8 and an iPhone 12. I have a DJI Mavic 3 too, but that's not relevant here. For a review of that drone, check out my last video. Go watch this one, then watch that one, then watch this one, and then watch that one. Chapter three, audio. I use this Rode NTG4 Plus shotgun microphone as the primary audio source for my YouTube videos. At the making of this video, this mic is still available. I use this microphone primarily as a boom mic for my commercial shoots, but for YouTube it works fine too. For YouTubers, I think it's absolutely vital to get the best audio you can out of whatever microphone you use. YouTube is wonderful, but it's also an amateur video landscape. That means it's a bad audio landscape for most of the time if you're on the site. And I think if your audio is good and people enjoy your content, they're going to keep coming back to your channel. Among the huge ocean of YouTube videos, your channel should be an island of above average audio where your viewers can go and rest their ears comfortably. I also use my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on occasion when I need to shoot on my Canon EOS R6. Chapter four, other stuff. I put all my light stands here on wheels because I'm lucky enough to have room in my home office for that and plus it helps me make these videos faster. I also switched from using my boom mic stand to this single stand stand. Oh yeah, and I guess we can't forget about my Apple iPad. I, I think it's eighth generation. This is where I keep my script notes that I can refer to while I'm shooting. There's no way that I could just roll camera and start riffing off the top of my head. The pros can do that, but I need talking points or things get real dark. Another small thing, but I got a keyboard for the iPad. That way I can make script adjustments as I go. I use a Manfrotto tripod and video head too, and I don't know. I seem to get my best results when I put the camera on top of it. Chapter five, bonus round. Let's do a POV speed run of the stuff I have on my background shelf, just for funsies. This is a clock camera that my wife got me, and on top of that is a hat that I got from Rocky Mountain National Park. I'm not sure if you can read the hat, but it's from the Civilian Conservation Corps which is a big part of the National Park's lore and development. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to do a video featuring the National Park someday soon. I really like going there. Next up is this old antique film camera that my wife's mother got for me. This one is a Polaroid and it doesn't work, but I like to keep it around because it really has an awesome look. And this is my Polaroid 600 film camera and this tennis ball is not even supposed to be there. But this camera is actually still operational. It does take photos. They just look really bad. So this is actually a print that I bought from an old film camera store in a really small town around where I'm from. I don't believe the store's there anymore, but at the time they had a whole bunch of old turn of the century, um, just film prints. This guy has such an awesome look. I'm sure this is some kind of cultural appropriation, but Man, when I saw that uh, print, I knew I just had to have it. It's such a good photo, such a good expression. And honestly, I bought this photo because, I mean, look at this guy. It's such a powerful, powerful pose. And he just looks like a guy you should not fuck with. I mean, look at him. Would you? Don't do it. You might remember this guy if you've seen any of the old Goosebumps movies. Uh, specifically the Haunted Mask. This is the mask that Carly Beth wears and it possesses her. I bought this mask as a stand-in prop basically for a horror film that I was developing based on a nightmare I had of my own. But honestly, I camera tested the whole thing. It was gonna be a little horror short for myself and it just wasn't scary enough. This mask was essentially a stand-in prop to be my creature. I guess now this mask is just kind of a monument to failure, <laughs> but I don't know. I still like his look and I don't know, he kind of reminds me that you need to see projects through, good or bad. This is my old DJI Phantom 4 Pro. This was the first drone I ever flew commercially and I flew it for a long time, two or three years professionally and it was a great drone, still is honestly. It, the drone is still totally functional, but I replaced it with my DJI Mavic 3 
So it's just sitting on the shelf now. Basically it's decoration. I don't know if my whole mantle here will just kind of turn into a camera graveyard. Who knows, but it looks cool up here. Some of my art fans out there might have noticed this print in my background. This is from Jeff McFetrich, if you're familiar with his work. My brother actually got this print for me as a gift and it honestly totally <laughs> encompasses what it feels like to be a filmmaker. And I guess I'll spare you maybe my interpretation of it, but I really like this piece because it has honestly a ton of creative interpretations and it's an awesome piece of art. And I don't know, maybe you can find your own meaning and then it can be art for you too. Most people have heard of Jeff McFetridge. He's pretty internationally known, but you know, I don't want to be too presumptuous. I will link his Instagram in my description if you want to check out some of his work. And even if his work doesn't ring a bell, I'm sure you've came across it. At the very least, he's the guy who designs these Apple Watch faces. All that stuff is probably more fun to talk about than the actual camera gear. Chapter six, style. This video presentation, I think currently best serves my YouTube direction so far. One guy who stands in front of his audience and just does his best to do his best and talk about creativity. I think the standing is maybe 10% more endearing than if I was just, I don't know, sitting down, which who knows, YouTube is weird. 10% could make all the difference on if your channel is a success or not. So far, I would not call the tone of my channel to be overly educational. Overall, this channel exists to primarily entertain you as I talk about filmmaking and photography stuff. One thing that I understood about YouTube a long time ago, and that's that entertainment on YouTube is evergreen, but content that is purely educational, that has a hard ceiling. And I apologize if you're here because you think my channel or any other YouTube channel can be a cheat code to a successful photography career. It can't. That's the masterclass lie that you've been sold way too many times. Look, speaking with total honesty, do not use my YouTube channel as a substitute for your 10,000 hours. And also, it's okay to be a little bit honest with yourself about why you're here. You're not here to learn. You're here to be entertained. And that's a perfectly healthy expectation for you and for me. If you wanted to be learning, you would be out doing. You're here because you enjoy being on the internet, consuming content about stuff that you like, and that's perfectly fine. Welcome back. I'm really happy that you're here. I just think you deserve And there you have it. That is all the gear that I use to make the best YouTube channel that you will ever see. That's everything. Minus the actual talent and years of video production, you need to actually get the job done. But that is all I got for today. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna try and keep an eye on the comments and reply to them as frequently as possible because we covered a lot of ground here with a lot of different gear. So if people have questions, I wanna make sure I can try and clarify. And now I need to please ask you nicely to like and subscribe to my channel. Just kidding. I know threats of personal violence and intimidation work best. So like and subscribe to my channel or... I'll see you next time.